This uh, video is the last lesson in chapter 13. In section 13.1, we compared two means. We did confidence intervals and significance tests for the difference of two means. Uh, this is uh, a lesson on the difference of two proportions. Um, and again, we're doing inference here for uh, the difference in population proportions that generically we'll call P1 and P2. Now, the video is relatively quick. Um, because the, the same flow holds for these problems as has held for everything since uh, chapter 12. Uh, in this particular video, we see lessons on, that it helps answer questions like, are is there a difference in proportions of men and women who prefer woodwind instruments? Is there a difference in proportions of Democrats and Republicans who favor a Viking stadium? Is there a difference in the proportion of males and females at Eden Prairie who think stats rocks? Uh, we can answer those questions. We can also estimate those differences using confidence intervals. So these are all phrased as significance test questions, uh, but we can also uh, estimate any of these differences with a confidence interval. Uh, our goal here is to compare proportions from two distinct populations. We do this by taking a separate sample from each population, uh, and our assumptions are that responses are independent within the group and that the groups are independent of each other, and that becomes the second condition we check. And then the sampling distribution of differences in proportions is approximately normal under the right conditions. Let's try and keep in mind the basis for all of this confidence interval and significance test work we're doing. We are taking samples of some sort. In this case, we're going to have sample proportions and be looking at a difference. And those differences are normally distributed under the right conditions. Now those differences have a mean and a standard deviation. So when we look at that sampling distribution of differences taken from all possible samples of the same size from the same populations in this case, then those differences have a mean. And in this case, that mean is the difference in the population proportions. We expect the, difference, the differences in sample proportions the averages of all those differences to equal the difference in the population proportion. Um, those differences, if calculated over and over again, have a variance. Uh, the formula is shown here. And then if we put a square root of it uh, over it, we get a standard deviation for those differences shown here. And that becomes the standard deviation for the sampling distribution of differences. And we do all the math off of that. So then from that, we can calculate confidence intervals. Now you'll notice a slight difference between the standard deviation calculation here and the standard deviation calculation I've circled here. Uh, the logic being that if I'm doing a confidence interval, it implies that I don't know P1 and P2. If I did, I wouldn't need a confidence interval for the difference. So instead of using P1 and P2 in the standard error calculation here, we use P hat 1 p hat to the best p's we have available at the time. So here we have a confidence interval that's made up of an estimate of the difference in proportions. Uh, a z critical value, it's always z, always z for proportions. And then a standard error. So we have an estimate plus or minus a certain number of standard errors uh, to create our confidence interval. And recall that everything after the plus minus here we call margin of error. So again, a similar pattern here, just the, uh, the variables we're using change slightly. Conditions, pay attention here. There's some differences here from the one proportion confidence interval. Uh, we need two random samples. So that's similar to the work we did with means. Uh, this is, whoops, the independence check. The independence check is similar as well. Right? We need uh, the samples to be independent from each other. And then within each sample, we want to make the assumption that the population is at least 10 times the sample size. That tells us that uh, those things we've sampled within each sample are independent from each other. Now, the third condition, pay attention to. This is slightly different than what we had proportions before. It's still a normality check. It's still n times p and n times 1 minus p greater than or equal to 10. I'm sorry, greater than or equal to 5 in this case. 
Um, so we, that's a slight change greater than or equal to five. And you'll notice we have to do it four times now, twice for each population. Now, instead of doing all that math, you can recall that these are counts of successes. Uh, what I circle in green here, those are counts of failures. So one way you can pass this check is just by pointing out that the number of successes and failures are greater than, uh, greater than or equal to five. And it might save you a little bit of calculation time. I'll do that in an example in the next video. Okay, so that's a confidence interval. Just jumping back, there's our confidence interval. Uh, conditions are familiar to us. Uh, we can also do significance tests. Here we'd be testing for a significant difference in two proportions. Uh, but there's something that changes here. In, in this particular case, if the null hypothesis is true, think about this, if the null is true, and our null here would be that population proportions are equal to each other, that there's nothing interesting going on. If that's true, then we make an argument here that really there's no difference in the populations and our measures are coming from a single population. And we do a calculation here that we use in standard error and condition checks called p hat combined. Notice the little c there. And notice how it's calculated. We add successes together for the two samples. So number of successes from the first sample, number of successes from the second. We add and divide by the sample sizes. And we end up with a single proportion called p hat combined. And because of that, um, assumption that everything comes from a single population, we use a different standard error calculation when doing significance tests. And it looks like this, and you'll see this on your formula sheet. We do p hat combined times 1 minus p hat combined times the sum of 1 over the first sample size plus 1 over the second sample size. This is an algebraic rewriting of what I crossed out with an x here under the assumption that there really aren't separate proportions, that there's one proportion describing both populations. So if you replace p hat 1 and p hat 2 with p hat combined, you end up with what I drew here, or what I wrote here. This is the standard error calculation for significance tests. It's different than the standard error calculation for confidence intervals. And you need to make a mental note of that. That's very important. And that will cost you points on our assessments as well on the AP test if you don't note that distinction in your calculations. Now, I sort of previewed this, but when we do significance tests for proportions, our null will be that the two proportions are equal to each other, or you could also write that the difference is zero, either one's acceptable. The alternative will then be what we're used to, the other three possibilities that the difference is positive, the difference is negative, or that just that there's a difference and we're not sure which way it goes. Our test statistic is Z, never T for proportions, only Z. The numerator, you see our estimate of the difference, P hat 1 minus P hat 2. What we don't write is P1 minus P2. It's there, but based on our confidence, I'm sorry, our, our null hypothesis, it's always zero. So because it's zero, we're typically just not going to write it at all. And then that's divided by um, standard error. And you can see here that we're using p hat combined in the standard error calculation. Conditions, quickly, this, for significance tests, the first two are exactly the same. They are exactly the same as what I showed you for confidence intervals, but the third one is different. And you need to make note of this. This is important. So when you do the normality check here, we're not really looking at successes or failures anymore. Okay, take that out. We're doing a separate calculation here with p hat combined. So it's successes and failures don't work here. What we need to do is four calculations using p hat combined, not p hat 1, p hat 2 and do our checks that way. So it's not quite as simple in this case as looking at successes and failures. Again, make note of that. That is a key difference using p hat combined. That is a key difference when doing significance tests for difference of proportions versus doing a confidence interval. It shows up on our test statistic calculation, as you can see in the denominator in the lower right.
and it shows up in the normality check as well. Those are the two places that difference shows up. So one last time here, the biggest difference uh, between significance tests and confidence intervals is the standard error calculation. So uh, one more time for emphasis here, when doing confidence intervals, we're going to use p hat 1 times 1 minus p hat 1 over the first sample size plus p hat 2 times 1 minus p hat 2 over the second sample size. And when doing a hypothesis or significance test, we have an assumption that we actually have one population since our null value is the proportions are equal to. So that's our assumption until proven otherwise. And so the calculation here um, is different for the standard error than what we use for confidence in Lastly, this is how it looks on your formula sheet. So we've seen this a few times now. We're dealing with proportions, difference of sample proportions, plural. Um, so when you look at the standard deviation of the statistic, you have to be careful to use the top formula here for confidence intervals, relate, replacing p's with p hats, and the bottom here for significance tests. It's written slightly different here slightly differently here, but this is the exact same formula that I just wrote on the prior slide. It's just the square roots are distributed here. Um, so again, that's what it looks like on your formula sheet. Uh, again, recall the top standard error calculation is for confidence intervals and the bottom one is for significance tests. So that's it on new material. There's a separate, uh, separate video that's got several examples in it that you should watch as well.